part series on all things turning centers. Yeah, so Aaron, last time we talked about five axis machines. So let's, let's talk about what makes a part application good for a turning center. Well, obviously one that's round, makes sense. Uh, one that has uh, round diameters that have a tighter tolerance to them okay. that can't be achieved by milling, right? And ones that are probably have a length to diameter ratio that's greater than each other. Yeah, so for example, I can't just put a part on my vertical machining center and run around there with an end mill because you know I'm holding you know tens instead of thousands, or I just can't get an end mill with ten inches of flute length. Yeah, cor or correct. Another thing that we also see trending too is just non-round parts on the turning center. Yeah, because now with the addition of live tools on the machines and you know Y-axis sub spindles. We can actually take parts that would maybe traditionally be turned and then placed in the machining center, and we can do most of that or all of that on the machine now. Yeah, another point to that is it can also be bar fed. Yep, another great thing we can add to the machine that way, you know, it's not having an operator stand there and load and unload parts all day long. The machine's a little more self sufficient, runs lights out to a certain extent. Yeah, good point. So now let's talk about turning centers with and without y-axis, the advantages and disadvantages. Yeah, so uh, traditionally, you know, you have like a two-axis lathe, right? I got X and Z axis. Um, then we have machines with C axis, that's a three-axis machine and a live tool. So those machines, you know, we can start to do, you know, milling and drilling on the diameters of the parts. Mm -hmm. But a limitation with that type of machine before you go to a machine with y-axis is like on this part here, for example, I've got a keyway. So if I want to mill that on a three-axis machine, my end mill can never move off the center line. Correct. Yes. So I can just all I can do is plunge in straight and move back and forth. So for something like this, you usually have to have an end mill that cuts whatever size you want, which is not the easiest right. thing in the world, right? Mm -hmm. So if I have a machine with a y-axis, what happens is the y-axis allows me to move up and down off the center line. Correct. Yeah. So now if I got like a quarter inch keyway, I can have like a 3 16 end mill go in there and control that and control that dimension. Yeah, I guess we get that question a lot. You know, a lot of people think, you know, oh, I have a three-axis lathe and I want to do keyways. That's Correct. the biggest one. Correct. And the issue you get is, like Vic pointed out, is your tool's always on center. Right. You know, your end mill has to be right to size. Right. And if you go and start interpolating, you get kind of this going on. Right. Your walls are going to be tapered because your tool's always about center. Line. Right. Yeah, so like on a three-axis machine, you know, like a part here, you know, most of your milling is done on the face of the part because we can use polar coordinates to machine that shape. Right. And then lots of times you're on the diameter of the part, you're doing a lots of just like drilling, tapping operations like that yeah, because on I'm on center line. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go to a, a Y axis machine, that allows us to do stuff like this where, you know, I'm moving off of center. You know, this is a straight wall uh, slot in here and I'm coming in and moving Y to interpolate all mm -hmm. that where I couldn't do that on a three axis machine. And you could probably, you know, do some more aggressive milling, you know, like, yes, we can achieve this shape with uh, three axis using polar interpolation. Yep. But if I can lock that axis in, yep. that rotary axis and use true Y, I could probably be a little more aggressive. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm no longer using, you know, C axis as a rotary table. I've got that locked and clamped in position. Now I'm using X, Y, and Z just like a machining center. Yeah, good point. Um, so the other thing too, typically machines with Y axis, they also have a sub on them. So what are the advantages to having a sub on the machine? Well, we can use that part as an example. Um, you know, being able to the whole done in one. Right. Um, so that would be, in my opinion, an advantage, you know, because I could run this out of the main pick off, transfer the sub, right. run this portion on the sub spindle, and then, you know, voila, done I got a completed part. Yeah, it makes sense, you know, uh, three axis uh, lathe, you know, you're gonna just be able to run the one side. Yeah. You know, whatever back work you have is either gonna be another operation on another machine, or you're gonna have to flip the part around in that machine. 
especially nowadays and as competitive as everything is, you know, having that sub spindle, you know, really sets you apart. Yeah. Makes sense. Yep. A lot of questions we get too sometimes is because I have a sub spindle on the machine, does that mean I can't use a tailstock? Right. Yeah, we get that question a lot. And to be honest, there's a couple ways to combat that. Um, there is, you know, live centers that are mm -hmm. made specifically for the, the uh, sub spindle using, you know, torque skip, you know, not the, you know, mention Royal has one that's spring loaded, straight shank just right. for a sub spindle. So you, you can still use a center even on a sub spindle machine. Good. It's good to know. So next, let's talk about bar feeders and bar pullers. Yeah, so when it comes to trying to automate the machine, you know, I'm running bar, you know, kind of parts like this here, you know, small parts, That's where I can get lots of parts out of one bar of material. Now I need to get that through the machine, right? Correct. So the first option we have and the cheapest option is like a bar puller, like this guy right here. Mm -hmm. So this actually goes into the turret and you set it up just like a, a, a tool, a turning tool, for example. Yeah. Okay. And at the end of my part, after I cut it off, it goes in the parts catcher. I come in with this tool and actually grab it mm -hmm. with the bar puller. I can open the chuck, pull the bar out, close the chuck, and then start running another part. Correct. So it kind of like does this motion. You got these two fingers here, you know, the material is going to slide in between the fingers. Correct. Like you said, chuck opens, pull out the next bar, right. come off, run the cycle again. Correct. So the key to that is unattended runtime, right? Yeah, I can I can tell the machine, you know, I know my part's two inches long, I got a bar that's 30 inches long, you know, I can figure out how many parts I'll get out of that bar and just say run 15 parts, for right. example. And that way the machine stops and I can you know, load my next bar in the machine. Right, so you're getting that unattended time at, you know, an affordable price. Obviously, this is a lot cheaper than a bar feeder. Yeah, and it kind of goes hand in hand with, like, the collet pads that you were looking at earlier. You know, I can put this on the machine in a bar puller and have, you know, go from a chucking machine to somewhat of a run unattended a little bit. Yeah, machine. correct. Um, so that's our bar puller. Now we have bar feeders and a couple different types of bar feeders. So what do we have for bar feeders? Typically, you know, you're going to have a, a short magazine bar feeder mm -hmm. and a long bar feeder, right. right? And really with the short bar feeders, they're technically just bar loaders. Yeah. Right? Because there's a lot of this misconception that, you know, oh, I bought a short bar feeder you know, I'm going to run a six foot bar, right. but technically you got to keep that bar to the same size as your headstock, right? We don't want bars protruding no. out of the headstock, right? That could be disastrous. Yeah. The big difference for me is, you know, a bar loader basically loads the next bar into the machine and then pushes that bar through where a, a bar feeder supports the rest of that bar hanging out the, of the machine. So I have guide channels and rotating tips, tips yeah, and all that. Right. So there's more setup and teardown involved with it, but it allows me to run a bigger bar, right? Correct. Yeah, so I guess the disadvantage of a, a short bar feeder would be, you know, obviously I'm cutting the bars up into more right. pieces. I could potentially have now three or four remnants right. uh, where a long magazine bar feeder, you know, I'm only dealing with one remnant. Right. Uh, but changeover, right? Like you said, you know, now I'm having to change, you know, guide channels and rotating tips and possibly split bushings and right. anti-vibration devices, things right. like that. Not that it's a bad thing, but those are certainly things the way out. Yeah, I mean, uh, a true bar feeder will be more expensive because of all the extra guide channels and stuff. And then the positive side of that though is generally with the true 12 foot bar feeder, you're running you know, more production, your part volumes are higher. Right? Yeah, Because you, you can justify that extra cost of the bar feeder. Or the changeover process, correct. right? Where on a short bar feeder, you know, it's going to be two or three minutes, right? Right. And then on a long bar feeder, you know, it could be 10, 15 minutes, right? Right. Those make sense. Yeah, and just to kind of sum it all up, you know, the bar puller and bar feeders allows you to 
get to that lights out or unattended runtime because now you have a, a bar feeder that's loading new bars, keeping the machine running, versus an operator standing there loading a new bar in every time you run out of the bar. Um, so it makes it very easy to get into that unattended, unattended runtime that a lot of people are after. Makes sense, those are good points. Well, join us next month when we continue on on part two of all things turning centers.